Our beloved messenger, sallallahu wa sallam, was sitting alone in a room, and he was praying in the night, in the, depth, in the depth of the night, in the darkness, subhanAllah. And as he was praying, his beard had become completely drenched right, with his tears. And literally his tears were dripping from his, from his beard onto his clothes. Right? And then after he's, he's praying, then he's sitting and he's making dua. And subhanAllah, there's literally a small puddle in front of him. And his companions asked, like, Ya Rasulullah, like, what's wrong? Like, what, what, what is it? Like, what has happened that has you weeping like this? And he said, my ummah, my ummah. And he just kept repeating this, like, my ummah, my ummah, my ummah. Right? And then, subhanAllah, in another narration, he says, I miss my brothers. Right? I miss... And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're right here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're right here with you. You don't have to miss us. Like, we're with you, Ya Rasulullah. He said, no, you're not my brothers. You're my companions. My brothers and my sisters, they're the ones who believe in me, and they follow me, and they've never seen me. Right? That's you. Right? You've never seen the Prophet, I'm not in person, maybe in your dreams, but if you've seen him in your dreams, then you've seen him. But yet, this is, he's weeping for you. This is something that I, I want us to understand, like as we're in this month, what is the blessing, what is the ni'mah that Allah Azza wa Jal has granted us? Literally, you are the ummah that, e that even the anbiya were jealous of. You are the ummah that when Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he said, Ya Allah, I saw Allah ma'fuz. I saw that there is an ummah that they, that literally they covered the entire horizon in their numbers. Ya Allah, let that be my ummah. He said, no, this is the ummah of Ahmed. He said, Ya Allah, I see in Allah ma'fuz. I see that there is an ummah that one day of their ibadah is a lifetime of ibadah. One night that they spend in worship of you is a lifetime of ibadah, Ya Allah. Musa alayhi salam is asking, Ya Allah, let that be my ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not answer the dua of even Prophet Musa. He said, no, this is for the ummah of Ahmad. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi wa ala'ani. This is Laylatul Qadr. That even Musa alayhi salam is saying, Ya Allah, there is an ummah so blessed, right? That even I am I'm begging you, right? Make that be my ummah. That even subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Isa alayhi salam returns, there will be people who will go to Isa, right? And even ask him, lead us in prayer, right? Lead us in worship. And he said, no, no, no. Today I'm not your prophet. Today I'm from the Ummah of Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi wa alayhi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you that. He has gifted you to be from the Ummah that even the Anbiya are asking Allah, Ya Allah, make me from that Ummah. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you that. Be tawfiq, lutuf, as a gift to you. So then how do we show our gratitude? That's the question. How do we show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us for, to be from amongst the greatest ummah? Right? How do, we, how do we even begin to say, Ya Allah, I know it's not because I'm worthy. It's not because of all of my salawat. It's not because I make 10,000 salawat today. It's not because, you know, I do everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said to do. It's not because... It's not because I'm so great, Ya Rabbi. It's only by your mercy. It's only a chance. It's an opportunity. Allah is saying, I'm going to open the door for you. Because also you're from Akhir Zaman. Right? You're from the end of time. So literally, I'm going to open the door for you and give you a chance. Literally, there's a, a narration that talks about like at the end of time, there's some people, Allah will literally just elevate them and elevate them and elevate them. Why? Because he's saying that he's, he's looking for those who are willing to grasp Nur Muhammadiyah. Who understand just a, a, a little bit of the sweetness of what it means to say, I, I, want to, I want to be like, I want to speak like, I want to walk like, I want to behave like, I want to eat like, I want to pray like. Habib Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa The one who's khuluqul adhim. 
But the reality, in order for us to be grateful, we have to understand the magnitude, right, of who he is, but also what he brought. What is it that the Prophet ﷺ has done for you specifically? If you were to ask yourself, what has the Prophet ﷺ done for you specifically? The first, inf the first thing, if we were just to look at ourselves as women, yes, we've read the books, he elevated your status, he raised your rank, but it's deeper than that. He actually confirmed your value at a time when everyone else was devaluing you. He actually was confirming how important you are to Allah Azza wa Jal, even at a time, even in our day and time, when literally people are like, you know, girls actually, they're not really a thing. Right? Like anybody could be a girl or a woman. Right? You're not really a thing. And, and the Prophet said, no, no, no. She's something great. Like don't get it, don't get it twisted. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally created the woman from his name, Rahmim. For the Prophet to say, like, I want, I want to tell you who you are. Don't let the world tell you who you are. Right? No, don't let society tell you who you are. Right? Don't let anybody else define your femininity. Don't let anyone else define you as a woman. Let me tell you who you are according to the one who created you. Why? So you can take your place in your position. So that you can play your role. And to let you know it, I'm going to exemplify it for you time after time after time in every stage of your development. For example, when Habib Allah sallallahu wa sallam would be sitting in a circle amongst men, right, important men, and our beloved Fatima Zahra alayha salam. I said, ooh, why'd you say Fatima Zahra alayha salam? When you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, and then what do you say? Wa ala ali. So Fatima Zahra, that when she would walk into a room, the beloved messenger of Allah as a young girl, he would get up, welcome her, kiss her hand, and then sit her in his place and he would move over. What is he saying? He says, you belong here. He's saying, you have a place here. He's saying, I will not allow someone, right, to push my daughters out. <laughs> that you have a place next to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I love you to sit here. I love you to be beside me. Allahumma <laughs> salli wa sallam ani wa ani. When we look at, subhanAllah, even the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's love for our mother Khadija. <laughs> love for the mother of Fatima. Like it's, it's, it's the way in which... Their, their, their interaction and their love and their sweetness right between them. There's no question when we read the seed of the Prophet وسلم, how he worked for her, how he made sure that her business was successful, that he made sure that she didn't lose dollars, she didn't lose business, that her business would expand. But then subhanAllah, even when he would climb in the mount in, in, on the, in the cave of Hira, right, in Jabal al Nur, there would be moments where our mother Khadija would actually climb up the mountain and sit with the Prophet وسلم, she would bring him food, right, and they would share loving moments. There wasn't ever a time he was like, you know, what are you doing here? Like, I don't you know him? I'm praying. I'm in khalwa. I stay home. I'll be back. No. He would welcome her. And they have like, you know, sweet little talks before. Then she would decide, you know, she'd go back. Even when the Prophet ﷺ was toward the end of his life, he witnessed, he just picked up a necklace. Right, of our mother Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an, and just looking at her necklace and having the memory of it being around her neck, it would bring him to tears. Think about that for a moment. That his level, he's not just sentimental, but this level of love that he has, that even once, I won't say who in this moment, right? Said, like, what, like, what business do you have with this old Qurayshi woman? And the subhanAllah, the Prophet said he became angry than, than, he had, than anyone had ever seen him. And he began to list her qualities. 
she believed in me when no one else believed in me. She supported me when other people turned me away. And this level, subhanAllah, like I think about what it means to be hafadhata lil ghaib. What it means for the woman to be the one who is the guardian of the unseen. That's mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. What does it mean to be hafadhata lil ghaib? That she's a guardian over the unseen. The Prophet وسلم, describes that for us in his relationship with Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an. Like how she supported him, how she assuaged his fears when he was in that moment of revelation, when literally the Prophet وسلم, is coming down from the, like, the most important moment of his life. Right? And he has just absolute, he he's, has doubt, he has concern. He's like, I don't know what just happened to me. I don't know if I've been touched by a jinn. I don't know if an oracle has happened. Like, I have no idea what just happened. But I have enough trust in you and respect for the way that you treat me and the way that you hold me and the way you're just willing to understand. That he runs to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an. He runs to her. And she looks at him. And she knows. Are you worried that you would be touched by jinn or he, never, never? He could have went to his friends. He could have went to Abu Bakr, Siddiq Radi Allahu Taala. He didn't. He went to our mother Khadija. What is he teaching you about you in that moment? What is he teaching you about the power that you have? What is he teaching you about how your rank is elevated? That how she's the one who then took him to Waraka and said, I'm, I have no doubt. I'm not in question about who you are. We just need the details, right? We just need to know what we call it, but I'm clear. I know Allah has elevated you. I know Allah would never disgrace you. I know you're blessed by Allah, right? And I'm going to prove, let me prove it to you. She even has enough knowledge in and of herself that when she, he says, I see him now, right? She just slight, she removes her scarf. Do you still see him? Right. She said, he says, I, I don't see him now that you've removed your scarf. She says, see, I told you that was an angel. Because had it been a jinn, he would never be shy from me. What is he telling, what, in this narration, what is he telling you? That the power of a knowledgeable woman that the power of a woman who understands the difference in the qualities of the jinn and the malaika. Then she takes him, subhanAllah, again, to Waraka, her cousin, and he confirms. Right? You're the last prophet. And she's like, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. How do we know? About, the, about what Sumaya brought. What is it that gave her that, that kind of courage, that kind of heart? It's her proximity to the Prophet right? It's her following, right? It's her looking at the Prophet and his strength and his example and saying that I can withstand anything from this dunya if I get to be with you in the Akhirah, Ya Rasulullah. He's saying, whatever anybody taught you about weakness or that you're afraid and you're too frail to stand up, no, 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 no. You're the first believers. You're the first martyrs. You're on the front line. He's saying, women, you got this. You have this. I see details for us, even what happens with Fatima Zahra. By the time she's 12 years old, he, said, he calls her, you are the mother of your father. The way that she cares for him when Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an passes away. Right? Her level of love. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is literally making salah, he's making sujood in front of the Kaaba and the, the, the warring Arabs at the time literally make this plot to harm him. Right? And they come and they choke him. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi wa ra'ani. But then they actually throw this, this big like pot of, of just animal... Um, guts, right? But it's not just guts. It's like also entrails. And like they throw this on the back of the Prophet 
And as, subhanAllah, they're, they're marching even to attack him further, Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala an, he sees this, right? And he runs. He sees the Prophet this way. He runs that way to go get help. He passes Fatima Zahra, radiallahu ta'ala anha, alayha salam. He passes Fatima Zahra. Fatima's like, what's happening? And she's like, they're attacking the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She doesn't say, let me go run and get help. She runs toward the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she's the one who picks up the entrails and the guts and throws it in their face and said, do you do this to him for no other reason than he believes in Allah? Why do we have these narrations? To tell you about who you are from the, from, the, from the youth of you, from the youngest of you, to the eldest of you. That you have the ability, subhanAllah, when you walk inside Nur Muhammadiyah, when you have proximity to the Prophet, there's so much you can change. There's so much power that you have. It's the Prophet وسلم, who tells Abu Hurairah that the womb is connected to the throne of Allah. Alhamdulillah, our scholars will say this is not, this is not about the woman. This is Silat al-Rahim. This is about lineage. I say, okay, that's no problem. But can you get Silat al-Rahim without the Rahim? And the Prophet وسلم, he doesn't mince words, nor does Allah Azza wa Jal. So if he wanted to say Silat al-Rahim, it's just Silat al-Rahim. But yeah, he just said the Rahim. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like you can't get that without the other. Why did he tell you that? He's telling you that when it comes, he's, he's teaching you about even your, your natural relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's teaching you about your natural relationship. There's a reason why in the, in the, in the story of Khawla, رضي الله تعالى عنها, when, she's, when she runs right to the Prophet وسلم, about what happens between her and her husband, they have a disagreement, they have an argument, right? And she runs to the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, I, I just, I love this moment. He's like, I, I'm, I've got some idea about it, but I'm not going to give you an answer, right? Because Allah hasn't commanded me yet. So what does she do? She runs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She prays to Raka. She goes back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, what answer do you have for me now? What does she know? What has he taught her about herself? He's taught her that your du'as will be answered. He's telling all of us, you run to Allah. When somebody can't give you an answer, don't doubt your ability to make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to your rescue. Time and time again, then Allah came to her rescue. Right? In, in revealing Surah Al-Mujaddila. And then he lays out the rules of restorative justice between her and her husband. Allah Oh, that's a phone. Say a for them. And so what the Prophet is just is is teaching us about ourselves. Right? He's literally like the more we study him, the more Allahumma salli wa sallam ani wa ani, the more he drowns out the noise. The more he pushes back all those dunya we are voices who don't know what they're talking about. But then in his prophetic example, he taught us how to be loved by Allah subhanahu. He taught us how to be loved. What is it that you have to do? Like Allah has literally set you up for all levels of success, right? And every aspect of your nature. Allah Azza wa Jal loves you so much. He set you up in the best manner. Now what will you do to say, Ya Allah, I'm so grateful. I will mold and shape myself according to your, must, your most beloved. According to Habib Allah, Salatullah wa salamu alayhi. Why? So that I can be worthy of what you have created me to be. So I can be worthy of the blessing that you gave me that even other anbiya wanted. 
Ya Allah, you gave him to me without even, with subhanAllah, very little did we do, if anything, honestly. Did we do that Allah said, I'm choosing you for this. But how we hold on to it? How do we hold on to this rope of Allah? Because it's for sure the Prophet ﷺ is the rope of Allah. <laughs> He's the one who raises you up. He's the one who pulls you up. He's the one that will pull us away from hellfire. He's the, he's the walking Qur'an. He's the example of what the Qur'an looks like lived. He's the living example of, the, of what the Qur'an is, subhanAllah. It's meanings, it's wisdom, it's light. And so then when we look at the seerah of the Prophet we read the, the, the books about the contents of his character. I want us to make a, Every time we read something about a hadith, about his character, make the intention to do it. Make the intention that say, even if once in my lifetime, I will do this. And it will be difficult. I'll tell you a, a funny story. If I didn't tell you this before, I think I told you this before, but I have to tell you again. So once I was in, uh, I was taking a class on hadith, and you know we were learning about actions and you know character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so we came across the narration where literally a tea, uh, a fly dropped in his drink, right? And so he said that, you know, basically dip the fly. If the fly drops in your drink, then dip the fly because the anecdote is in, the sickness is in one wing and the anecdote is in the other, right? So I was like, and you know, that my teacher told me the same thing I just told you, right? You read something about the Prophet Wasallam, and then you make the intention, inshallah, once in my lifetime, I'm gonna do it. Right? So I was like, bismillah. Then I read that hadith and I was like, la ilaha illallah. <laughs> Because, you know, we're Americans. We're straight germaphobes. Take us very little to deviate. La ilaha illallah. The very next day, no easy exaggeration, right? I'm at a friend of mine's house. She pours tea. May Allah, Allah, yurhamah. She used to make the best chai. I mean, the best chai. And subhanAllah, we're drinking chai, and I'm like, this is so good. And I sit it down, and what happens? A fly lands in my tea. And I was like, I looked at it. I immediately knew. I was like, oh, okay, this is a test. <laughs> right? Of course, I was like, Ya Rabbi, please have mercy on me. Please forgive me. You know, you know this is, <laughs> you know where I'm from. Flies, Ya, ya Allah. Right? But just because. Right? Just because. I was like, okay, I just have to do this. <laughs> right? You're just like this. <laughs> Literally. I can't tell you I gulped it. I took the tiniest sip. It was like, Bismillah, I did it. But it's true, right? It's, that's difficult. I'm telling you. Oh, no. I, I know we're germaphobes. Allah must die. But honestly. Anytime you read something about the character of the Prophet when you go through the pages, right, just say, oh Allah, make me like this. Mold and shape me to, to speak like this, to sit like he sat, right, to behave with my family the way that he behaved. Oh Allah, bless me to be with my neighbors the way that he was with his neighbors. Oh, because why? Why are you asking for that? Because he's Habib Allah, salatullah wa salam wa He is the beloved of Allah. And so if you become like that, what's going to happen? You're going to become beloved to Allah, subhanahu What is the result of becoming beloved to Allah? We're all familiar with the narration where Allah tells, tells the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I wage war. Allah says, I wage war against those who try to harm my beloveds, my awliya, I wage war with them. Then Allah says, when I love a servant, like Allah is say, telling them, right? Like Allah is saying, when I love a servant, I announce it to Jibra'il. I, and I tell, yeah, Jibra'il, anna ahibu fulam wa fulam. Hey, oh, Jibra'il, I love such and such. I love Fatima. I love Khadija. I love Latifa. I love, like, yeah, Jibra'il, I love her. 
And then Jibra'il says, Ya Allah, I love her. And then Jibra'il goes to the other chief angels. He tells Mikhail, the biggest one I'm concerned about, right, is that he tells Israel. That's what I'm concerned about. Ya Rabbi, please tell Israel you love me. Why? So when he comes, <laughs> he can be, this is one of Allah's beloveds. Right, please don't snatch my soul. Please, please, Ya Rabbi. Right? But he tells the other angels, hey, Allah, he says, Allah, he gives a, he gives a senate for it. Right? Allah and Jibra'il love such and such. So they love them. And then literally that love is thrust into them. And then Mikhail and Israfil and Israel and the chief angel and Ridwan. The one who is the guardian of the gates of Jannah. Says, oh, I love this one. What happens if Ridwan loves you? What happens if the angels of Jannah love you who are decorating your home, Ya Rabb? What happens if they love you? And then they tell the other angels. And then those angels keep the lower angels until the people on earth love that person. Hey, and then the people on earth say, I just love, I love her. I love her. Why do you love her? I don't know, but I love her. Right? It's like how I feel about Sheikha Nihad. I just love her. <laughs> I love her. Why? Obviously. And then Allah says, and then my servant draws near to me. They come to me with what I've made far upon them. What does that mean when you said you draw near to them? When, you, when Allah says, like, my servants use that ibadah to become closer to me. Meaning they're not the type that just do it out of obligation. They're not the type that says, you know, I got to check the box. I prayed duhur, I prayed asr. They're not those type. They're the type that's saying my fard, right, is what I use to become near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the type that they pray in order to only distance themselves from hellfire. I don't want to go to hell, so let me pray. No. They're the type that if, you, you're, if your salah is bringing you near and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means you have it with khushur. You're doing it with, with hudur. You have a presence. You have a concentration. Right? Your, your, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a sweetness to it. You're the one who's like, is it duhur? Yeah, I'm ready to pray. Let me just go ahead and pray. Let me go ahead and pray my sunnah. I'll just sit here until it's, it's time. And then they continue to draw near to Allah subhanahu right? With the involuntary. The voluntary, involuntary. The sunan. <laughs> the extra obligatory. That which isn't far, it's something you like. I just, I don't, it's, I don't have to come to you. I want to come to you. Ya Rabbi, I need to talk to you. Ya Rabbi, whether it's, it's not just because it's bad. I just want to talk to you because you're Allah. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to tell you how much I love you. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, Subhanallah, and adim. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, Subhanallah, and adim. Ya Allah, I want to thank you for the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who gave us the doors, the gateways to Jannah. Ya Allah, I want to thank you for making me from amongst this ummah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Muna Muhammadin wa Nani wa Sahabi wa Sallam. They're making, they have extra worship, extra ibadah. Allah says, and they keep coming close to me until I love them. And when I love them, I become the eyes in which they see, the ears in which they hear, the mouth in which they speak, the hands in which they take action, and the feet in which they travel. Do you know, do you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying? Like the level of basira. The level of wisdom and understanding and commitment and tawfiq and athia. The Prophet you cannot do the fara'id unless you learn it from the Prophet You can't learn the sunan, you can't draw nearer to Allah subhanahu even with the extra obligatory, unless you do it through the Prophet So you're not going to be loved by Allah unless you go through his gateway. 
This is what he is to us. He is literally Babu Rahman. Right? He is literally the doorway to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and it's it's not, he's not a mystery. This is what Allah, Allah is so great. He's not a mystery. It's like you, every single detail about my life, you have it. What I said at this time, how I behaved at this time, how I sat, how I walked, when I brushed my teeth, what I did when I woke up in the morning, what I said to my wife, how I was with the children, you have every single detail of it. We can't say like this life is without a map. It's literally like, okay, what did he do this time? Okay. And then at this time of the day, he prayed Salatul Duha. And then at this time of the day, he did this. It's, it's literally, subhanAllah, like, you know, color by number. That's how, alhamdulillah wa shukrila, my shuyukh taught us it's, it's actually not so difficult. We think it's like very difficult. It's a matter of just saying, I submit. I'm coming to you, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Habibi, Ya Rasulullah. I'm coming to you. Put me under that cloak, <laughs> on that burda. Make me under that. <laughs> Veil me with that. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik sayyidina habibina munana Muhammad. I close with this. I didn't hear the adhan on the other side. I just heard the phones. But I'm looking at the sky and I know it must be maghrib. And I, I just want to, to end with this. Our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, reminded us on the day of judgment, there will be people who will be running running. There's some people who will be so nervous they will eat their fingers to the to this level. Then there's some to their knuckles, some to here. Some will actually go all the way up to their shoulders. Some will drown in their own sweat out of fear. And they'll be running, looking for somebody, anybody who can help them, anybody who can save them, anybody who can speak for them, anybody who can advocate for them. They will run to Ibrahim and he said, I'm not suited for this. And he will speak out of adab about some things that he did. And then they will run to Musa. And Musa alayhi salam will say, I'm not suited for this. Go to Ahmed. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi. They will go to Isa. And Isa will say, I am not suited for this. That day, if you want salvation, if you want help, you got to run to the Prophet. Now, the great thing is, if we were from amongst those who already made that submission, that promise in this dunya, he already knows our name. He's already advocating for us. <laughs> Every Laylatul Jama'ah, your name is presented to him and your deeds. Every Laylatul Jama'ah, he's already making istighfar. <laughs> he's already making the offering. He's already making shukr for your good deeds. If you make that promise, truly, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's already granted to you. Yawm al-Qiyamah, you're not going to be a stranger. You're not going to be running around looking for somebody to help you. You're going to be like, I already know who can help me. And I'm standing next to him. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi wa alayhi. That's the, you know, what I just want to tell us. That if we increase in our salawat, and I don't just mean the dhikr of the tongue, I mean the salawat of the body, the salawat of the heart, the salawat of our soul, the salawat of our character. Let everything about us be a salawat. Let everything about us testify to Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Mawlana Muhammad. That on your muqiyama, I'm not looking blind, I'm not running. Ya Rab. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Habibina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala anihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya awlin awlin, ya akhirin akhirin, ya dhukuwat al-mateen, ya raham al-masakeen, ya arham al-rahimeen, ya arham al-rahimeen. Ya Allah, we ask you by your infinite mercy that you mold and shape us into servants of yours with whom you're well pleased. Ya Rabbi, mold and shape us according to the character of Habibullah sallatuna wa salamu alayhi. 
Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please bless us to be from amongst those who see him often in much, Ya Rabbi, in our dreams. Ya Rabbi, when we pass from this dunya, let it be him, Ya Rabbi, that greets us into our graves. Ya Rabbi, let it be his hand that pulls us out of our graves on Yawmul Qiyamah. Ya Rabbi, let it be beside him, next to him, that we stand, Ya Rabbi, on Yawmul Qiyamah. Ya Rabbi, let it be from his blessed hand that we take a drink from, Ya Rabbi, at the Hawd, from the rivers of Kawthar. Ya Rabbi, let it be with him that we stand, Ya Rabbi, in front of you, by which you grant us, Ya Rabbi, by his intercession that you grant us entrance into Jannah to Firdaus al-Ala, Ya Rabbi, with him. And Fatima Zahra, without reckoning, Ya Arham rahimin by your mercy, Ya Arham rahimin by your mercy, Ya Arham rahimin by your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, grant us a complete and perfect pardon after which there is no sin nor stain of it, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, make us from amongst those who are enveloped in your kindness. Ya Rabbi, make us from amongst those, Ya Rabbi, that you have have protected from every harm and destruction, Ya Allah. Bless us and our children to be from the Qaniteen, the Salihin, the Siddiqeen, Ya Arham Rahimin, and those who have falls on Adim. Allahumma saniyana Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Mulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Ameen. Afwa minkum.